quote that occurred to me that uh, journalists must be Tina Force because we're all big mouth and not much else. <laughs> so, anyway, our next guest, our, our next presenter is Dr. Kelly Pitt, and she may be a lecturer at Griffith uh, University in Australia, but tonight she's going to bring her home the Jelly Connection to Santa Barbara and coastal California. From how they affect the Apple Canyon, the nuclear plant up north, to who wins when jellies take on a nuclear powered aircraft carrier like Santa Barbara's own USS Ronald Reagan. Her research focuses on understanding how blooms, there's that word again, of jellyfish influence food webs, in particular in coastal waters. And currently she's undertaking a project in Norway, examining, uh, she, currently she's undertaking a project in Norway. <laughs> Thank you. Kyle? lifelong ambition to work on jellyfish. Um, I uh, was interested in fisheries research and I undertook a project on jellyfish fisheries and from then I ended up spending most of the last 15 years researching jellyfish. And there's no denying that jellyfish tend to have a bit of a bad reputation and lots of our encounters are quite negative but the negative press that you often hear associated with jellyfish is really only half the story and in fact there's many reasons why we benefit from having jellyfish in our, in our oceans and so tonight I just want to tell you a little bit about the good, the bad and the beautiful aspects of the jellies. So let's start off just briefly with some of the bad aspects. <laughs> okay, the, the most common encounters that we probably have with jellyfish are when on a hot summer's day we go to the beach looking forward to a swim and we find that the beach has been closed because uh, currents and winds have actually driven jellies close to shore. Well, in some parts of the world, and in northern Australia in particular, the beaches are actually closed throughout summer because of some very dangerous <coughs> jellyfish. And here's a photograph of the box jellyfish, um, whose scientific name is Chironex. And Chironex is one of the most venomous animals in the world. And in fact, if a small child is stung by this animal, they can die within about three minutes. And here's a, a photograph of a 12-year-old girl who was actually stung by Chironex uh, last December. And this girl survived, only just, thanks to people who knew CPR. And she'll actually bear the scars from this envenomation for the rest of her life. But she's very lucky to have survived her encounter. So if you want to go swimming in northern Australia during summer, you've got two options. One is that you can swim within these en enclosures, which are deployed along many of the North Queensland beaches. And the second is that you can wear some protective clothing, <laughs> such as a lycra singer suit. And in fact, singer suits are really the uh, beachwear of choice when you're visiting northern Australia during summer. Okay, but not all jellyfish are dangerous. In fact, the vast majority of them are not dangerous at all, although they might induce a mild sting. However, they still can have actually ne negative impacts with human society. Now many coastal industries rely on seawater for cooling processes and when vast blooms of jellyfish occur, the jellies can get sucked into the cooling water intakes and block them and then shut down the coastal industries. And in fact, this is what happened just two years ago at the Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Station, which is located on the coast, just a few miles up the road in California here. And the moon jellyfish, which is a common species of jelly you find along the coast here, actually got sucked into the condensers and shut down the power plant for a couple of days. But it's not just coastal industries that suffer, ships also suffer pretty badly from jellyfish. And for similar sorts of reasons, the, the ships use uh, seawater for cooling their engines, and in fact the, the jellies can get sucked into the condensers and, and shut down the engines. And this is actually what happened to the USS Ronald Reagan when it visited the port of Brisbane in Australia in 2006. <coughs> The, uh, the, this is one of the world's most powerful nuclear-powered uh, aircraft carriers and it had to leave the port of Brisbane several days before it was scheduled to depart because jellyfish kept shutting it down. So if you want to know how to disable a uh, nuclear-powered <laughs> aircraft carrier, the jellyfish can do it for you. Jellyfish also um, interfere with fisheries and uh, when you're watching the video at the start of the presentation tonight, you might have noticed that the, di the giant jellyfish, and this is the giant jellyfish that, that Kathy spoke about in her talk as well. So these animals reach up to about six feet diameter, and they're absolutely huge. And they're causing very big problems for uh, fisheries in Japan because they clog the nets and they can physically damage the nets because of their sheer weight. But they also, because they sting the fish that could cause it, that 
get caught in the nets, they actually spoil the catch. So they can be um, quite problematic. But it's not just um, hauling in the nets that causes the problems. When a, a trawler is actually underway, and when the big nets are deployed, and they suddenly encounter a huge plume of jellyfish, it's like they hit a, hit a big snag, and it can actually cause trawlers to sink. And in fact, this is exactly what happened to this trawler in Norway <coughs> only three weeks ago. So some of their interactions with fisheries can be, can be quite detrimental. Okay, so we've heard a bit about the bad, but now I'm going to want to talk about the good things about jellyfish and, and why it's beneficial for us to have jellyfish in our oceans. So, jellyfish are an integral part of our oceans and they provide a lot of ecosystem services and um, they're a sign of a healthy, um, a normal, healthily functioning ecosystem. And some of the ways that they actually benefit the ecology of the oceans is that they provide shelter for juvenile fish. So when these fish are very small, they're susceptible to predators, and one way that they can uh, avoid predators is to associate with jellies. And by swimming amongst the tentacles of the jellies, you can imagine that there's no predator that's going to come in and, and try and feed them, uh, feed on them. So in this way, the jellyfish are actually providing a service because the, many of the species that associate with them are commercially important. So they may actually enhance fisheries production. And there's a lot of marine animals that eat jellyfish, and in fact, some of them are very charismatic and well known. So this is the enormous um, sunfish mola mola, which you might have seen in the waters off Santa Barbara um, quite regularly. So this is an enormous animal, and it eats almost entirely jellyfish. So if we were to lose the jellies from our ocean, we would lose a lot of our, our charismatic marine species as well. But you know, it's not just um, marine animals that eat jellies. We actually eat them as well. And it, Around the world, there's about half a million tons of jellies that are harvested um, worldwide. They're predominantly eaten um, in um, Asian cuisine, but the fisheries for jellyfish do exist throughout the world. So there's been a fishery um, for jellies around Florida, here in the United States. There's also been fisheries in Australia. When the jellyfish are harvested, they're dried and they're salted. And when they're prepared, you soak them in water to get rid of all of the salt, and you shred them up so they look a bit like noodles. And you mix them up with different sauces and, and different types of seafood and you normally eat them as a cold salad. And one thing you might be aware of is that jellies are actually the focus of tourism. Um, so Palau is a, is a tiny island nation in the, in the Western Pacific Ocean and it has some lakes, some coastal lagoons, which are filled with millions upon millions of, of small jellyfish that don't sting. And the fact that they don't sting means that you can swim about them quite safely. And it's quite an amazing experience to jump in the lake and swim amongst all of these jellyfish. And if you go to Palau, one of the must-do activities is actually to go for a swim in Jellyfish Lake. And you might also be aware that jellyfish are really important in, uh, in aquaria as well. Um, they make fantastic and spectacular displays, and they're now a feature of some of the world's major aquaria. And most of you may have been to the Tai Warner um, Sea Centre down uh, on Stearns Wharf, and you will have seen that they also have a display of the moon jellyfish down there. And you know, even the, um, the fearsome box jellyfish may offer some benefits to society because the toxins um, that, it have, that, that it has are being investigated for the, their use as a cardiovascular um, medicine. So pharmaceutical companies are very interested in looking at that species. So although the jellyfish do undoubtedly cause us a few problems, they have many benefits as well. But what is truly undeniable is that they really are one of the most spectacular animals you find in our oceans. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela.